Hey folks, so I'm gonna do a uh, potentiometer circuit here and uh, measure it with the uh, analog to digital converter on the CPX. And so this is a circuit playground here and this little blue thing is a potentiometer and there's a little knob on it. Um, potentiometers come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, I have a couple different potentiometers here. Like here's one with the three little legs and the knob. Um, I've, got, I've got this one here, which is a little bit bigger and and it twists and then the three prongs are actually in the back here. And, uh, and then here's the blue one that I'm using, uh, again with a little knob and, uh, and the, three, the three legs. Um, but anyway, yeah, you're basically looking for a little, a little uh, circuit with three legs and, uh, and a knob. And uh, the way I have it wired up, and I'll show you a wiring diagram in a second, um, but basically I've got this black wire ground connected to the uh, this side of the potentiometer. And then I've got 3.3 volt power uh, hooked up to the other side of the potentiometer. And then, and I'm doing 3.3 volts because remember the circuit playground only runs on 3.3 volts. Um, if you run five volts through the analog um, sensor, I think it'll saturate. It might actually break it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I bet you the Adafruit put in some safety settings in there, but I don't want to risk it. Um, and then the, uh, I have, this uh, white wire, A2, which stands for analog port two, hooked up to the middle, okay? And so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, switch over to, I have Tony pulled up, but that's not exactly what I wanna do. Um, and I have some code that I, I have pulled up that I'm gonna show you later. What I wanna show you is a wiring diagram uh, for a potentiometer and uh, sh show you es essentially what we're looking at. So wh what a potentiometer does is that we have power hooked up here and ground hooked up here. And what we're doing is, is as we rotate the knob, we're rotating this, wire, this line here. And what we're doing is we're changing the, the resistance across this leg and this leg. And, what, and since we have an analog port reading on this middle pin, what we're doing is, is as we rotate the knob, we are, oh, and you know what? I don't know if you can actually see this because I think my figure, my, my I have my, uh, my, my face right over here, so sorry. So here are the three pins and I'm varying the resistance here and here. And as I rotate that knob, it is changing the resistance on this leg and this leg, and it's changing the voltage that's coming through here. Um, so I have, I have this code here that I've sort of already built. And so let me just walk through this code. So I, I import board, um, I don't need digital IO, and uh, I'm importing time and analog IO. So board just allows me to access different pins on the board. Let me zoom in here. And um, time allows me to keep time. And then analog IO allows me to um, access the uh, analog to digital converter. And so I just make analog here. If, if you want, I could call this potentiometer if you have multiple sensors, but I'm just gonna call it analog. And then analog IO is the module. And then analog in is the function. And then I'm telling it that I'm reading pin A2. If I, if I move that white wire to a different pin, then you need to uh, take that into account. Okay, so then in the while loop, what I'm doing is, is I'm saving the digital output. So what's, ha so what's happening is, is that the, uh, the, the voltage uh, is coming in the A2 pin as a continuous uh, analog signal, right? And then what the circuit playground is doing is it's converting the continuous signal to a digital signal um, using a 16-bit analog, a analog to digital converter. And so if I print here down here, I have time.monotonic. And so here's the time. So I've been running this for quite a long time. And then comma DO, that's the digital output. I'm going to get a number that's low here. But if I start to turn the knob, you'll see that number gets bigger. And if I go all the way, if I turn it all the way, that number goes all the way up to 65,000. And if I open up uh, here, let me just, I have Tony pulled up. If I type in uh, two to the 16th power, that's 65,536. And so that's why I'm getting that value there. What I can do then is on the circuit playground itself, I can actually convert that digital output back to a voltage and I can do 3.3 times that digital output divided by two to the 16th power. And then I can print the voltage. And so you'll notice in this third column here, I have 3.3 and I can rotate the knob and I can actually change the voltage. So what that's saying is, is that the voltage drop from the first leg to the middle leg is almost zero volts because I've basically short circuited it. 
Um, but if I rotate it the other way, I basically open it up and the voltage drop is almost 3.3. And that's what's happening there. So that's what your potentiometer is doing. And potentiometers are really useful because you can essentially um, design a circuit to do something depending on if, uh, if something happens. So, you know, I, I, I could do something like this, like import Neo pixel. And then let me, let me grab some code um, from GitHub because I, I haven't memorized this. Uh, and let's see, let's grab, uh, probably have like some, yeah, here's NeoPixel and then here's light show. And so here's import NeoPixel and then here we go, set up the pixels. So I'm gonna grab this and then put this over here. And then I'm going to grab where, and then it's just pixels.fill and pixels.show. So what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something really easy. And I'm gonna just say, uh, oops, I'm gonna say if DO is less than 32,000 um, pixels dot fill 255, two, 255, 255, and then pixel, and then I'm gonna do else. So otherwise, if it's not less than 2,000, then uh, pixels dot fill zero, zero, zero. And then I'm gonna do a pixels dot show and then it's saying that brightness doesn't exist. So I'm gonna just make the brightness uh, 120. And so if we look at the uh, circuit playground here, hopefully you guys can see this. If I rotate the knob to be less than 32,000, those lights should come on and there you go, they did. And then if I rotate back past 32,000, they turn off. And so again, so you know, this is just completely in software. So. I have a situation here where I have a knob now that I can turn lights on and off, okay? Um, another thing that you can do with, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because I don't actually want that to happen every time we, we rotate a thing. So another thing that you might wanna do with a potentiometer is you might wanna measure an angle. So if you hook up like, a, say a, a deployable mechanism to a potentiometer, what you can do is you can say, well, if the voltage is zero, the angle is zero, and then as it rotates, it's going to rotate the potentiometer and cause that voltage to change. So a lot of times what I might wanna do is I might actually wanna plot, um, plot this. So it's really easy to plot using the plotter in, um, uh, in what's, it, what's this thing called, in, in mu. And so I commented out this print statement and what I did is I did something kind of interesting. I made what's called a tuple. So I put parentheses around the variables that I wanna plot and I put a comma and if I get rid, if I, you look at the serial monitor now, there's parentheses on either side and a comma. And so if I get rid of the serial monitor, but I add the plotter, um, what you'll see is that it's actually plotting that number that I was doing. And so now what I can do is I can actually rotate the knob and you'll see that the uh, signal on the, uh, in the plotter is actually changing. Uh, so you can actually, you know, sort of visualize this in, in real time, which is pretty, pretty useful. Um, now this is all well and good, but what if you wanna you know, plot data, right? Well, if we wanna plot time in addition to the digital signal, you know, we, we could do this. And, and maybe we don't want voltage, we just want these two, these two signals. Now you'll notice the difference between these two lines here. There's no, there's no extra parentheses and there's no, um, well, there is a comma between them, but there's no extra parentheses. If you add extra parentheses, what happens is that it prints it like this. And this makes it really difficult for you to plot. So I recommend you know, getting rid of those extra parentheses so you can see it like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna really quickly just kind of rotate this down um, all the way down to zero or close to it and then back up to 65,000. And then what I'm gonna do is what you're not supposed to do, but I'm gonna unplug the CPX. And then I'm gonna do this, what I, what I, what I, this is what I call method one. Um, where I just copy and paste the serial monitor. So I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna, oops. This is why I don't like this method very much. Let's see, right click, copy. And then I'm gonna run over to Tony and I'm gonna make a new file and hit Control V. And then I'm gonna save this to the desktop as a pot data.txt, okay? And so over here, what I can do is I can say data is np.load text of pot data.txt. And again, you'll notice that there's no commas or parentheses in my file here. And if I hit F5, um, sometimes I have to run mine twice for some reason, you'll see that in my variables, uh, you guys can't see it, but in my variable space, I've got data, numpy, and matplotlib. 
And so if I take a look at data, um, I've got hopefully two columns of data. If we do, if we type in np.shape of data, it is 71 rows and two columns. So that's good news. So what we can do is I can say time is the first column, and then I can say the potentiometer data is the second column, and then I can go ahead and plot time and pop and do a plt.show. I should probably make some labels and things like that, but there you go. So there's me turning the knob all the way down to zero and then back up and here's time in, in seconds. Now, if I wanted to clean this up, one of the things that I could do is I could say time is equal to time minus time of zero. And what that'll do is that'll shift the time over so that it starts at zero, which is kind of nice. Um, I probably want to throw a grid down, throw an X label down. This is time in seconds throw a Y label down. And what I want to do for the Y label is I want to do something different. I actually want to compute the voltage, which again is going to be 3.3 times the pot value divided by two to the 16th power, right? That's converting the digital output to voltage. And then rather than plotting the potentiometer value, I'm going to plot the actual voltage. So when I come over here to the Y label, I'm going to plot voltage. And so now I've got a really nice plot that shows the voltage in the across that potentiometer as a function of time. And again, I can use this to compute you know, whether or not I want to turn something on or off. I could use it to tune a gain or a parameter for a control system. And I could also use it, you know, say, to measure the angle of something deploying um, if you mechanically hooked it up to that potentiometer. Um, so I think this concludes this video. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think this video, I think I'm just going to leave it there. Um, I'll, do, uh, I'll do another video for um, saving the data to the actual circuit playground. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one.